Hello there and welcome to this quick guide on how to replace the stock air cooler of a tough 3090 or to some extent a 3080. I've always wondered how this is done even before switching to liquid. So if you feel the same way or if you're in the process of doing it, this one's for you. We begin by flipping the card on its back with the I.O. facing to our right, which reveals all the necessary screws you need to unlock the cooler. We're gonna follow EK's manual here and do this in two steps. So first, remove the four screws on the left and continue later with the four holding in the bracket. The bottom left screw on the bracket is covered by a security sticker, which I first tried to peel off but failed miserably. In the end, I just punched the driver through it and continued. Then move on to the remaining six screws, starting with the four just around the bracket, followed by the last two on the right side. Separating the cooler from the PCB can be a bit of a challenge and depends on your card and its condition. Mine took a little more effort than expected, but then again, the card was running for almost 10 months on a daily basis. If you likewise have trouble separating, just wiggle it a bit until you feel it loosening. The cooler that is, not your butt. Whatever the case may be, be careful and never use too much force while doing this and keep an eye out for the fan and RGB cables on the top left here when separating. You don't want to accidentally snap something off. If you feel ready and have the card positioned the same way I do, flip the cooler down to reveal the guts. Again, be careful when you do this. Then gather your thoughts as we move in to cut the umbilical cord. And please don't use a screwdriver as I did. That's a dumb idea and a slip-up could easily deal some severe damage. Congratulations, you've concluded the first part of the operation. It's time to appreciate the heft of your newborn. Don't drift off too much though. We're gonna continue with the heatsink next. This is what the second batch of screws was holding in. In my case, this part was also a lot easier as it came right off. And there we are. The top is completely cleared and it's time to do some cleaning. I used Q-tips and a dose of rubbing alcohol to remove the remaining thermal grease and pads. There are other more efficient liquids to do this, but I didn't have anything else at hand. I also used my lens blower thing to blast away any small debris that lodged itself between more delicate bits. Once again, don't use any excessive force. Patience is key here. Patience. Use the force. Think. The backplate is a little bit easier. Looking at the card with the IO shield facing the left, we have five screws separating us from achieving eternal glory. Once cleared, proceed similar to before. Again, be careful. This time around, there's even less structural support for the card. So if you have difficulty with separation, just wiggle it a bit. After clearing stage 2, we can proceed for one last time with our most dissatisfying practice, cleaning. This time around, I got even more inventive and used zip ties to clear the thermal paste stuck in between memory. Now that we've gotten rid of all the old baggage, it's okay to take a few minutes and do some staring. Then it's time to move on to discover everything that came in a box with the block. We have a small metal allen wrench, a collection of tiny screws including some plastic washers, two plugs, a bit of thermal paste and a large plastic wrench. The larger wrench, by the way, can be a big help in putting together the rest of your custom loop, making sure you don't over tighten those fittings, so keep that around if you're in the process of building an entire rig. Last in the box are four thermal strips, two narrow ones and two wide ones. They will have to be cut into the necessary sizes. To do this, place them on your board to see where you need to make the appropriate adjustments. Don't worry though, there's plenty to go around and you also don't have to be dead on accurate. Just make sure everything that needs to be covered is covered, while simultaneously keeping anything longer than needed in check, especially near the screws. The manual also states that one should remove the protective foils from both sides before adding the strips. I decided to do no such thing and unfortunately had to pay the price. If you take a closer look at the strips, you'll notice that one side is a bit thicker, which I chose to go with first, removing the skinnier counterpart after the application. 
Unfortunately, that proved to be much more difficult, requiring a pair of pliers. I tried it the other way around during the backplate assembly, which was even worse. So I'd say follow the manual here and remove both before you do your placement. After that, it's time to add some thermal paste. I went with my proven choice of compound and applied a generous amount. With that part done, we can get the water block and have one last look at the guts powering your dreams before carefully aligning everything and merging it. I used my blower again to evict any dust particles that might have moved in during its stationary state. Make sure nothing is covering any parts of the block during this process. After the successful touchdown, flip the stake around on its raw side. This is where our paths might diverge, because securing the water block differs depending on whether or not you're going to attach the matching backplate or not. If you've got the full armor, you only need 7 screws. If not, 13 is the number for you. This is also where you're going to need the washers. Congratulations, the water block's attached. Flip it around once more to confirm your work and enjoy those endorphins. Attaching the backplate is slightly more complicated. There are more thermal strips and they also vary in thickness. The difference is minuscule, between 1.5 and 2 mm, so make sure you apply the correct ones to the right place. You can hold them up close to each other to figure out which ones are which. Just make sure you don't mix them up later. According to the manual, we're also going to add the strips directly to the plate instead of the PCB. So proceed with the shortening after taking the measurements. If you have a 3080, your setup varies slightly. You can also check the manual linked in the description for more information. If you have trouble aligning the backplate, you can use the top left screw seen here to make sure everything lines up correctly. Daddy? Daddy? Once you're finished, turn the card around and secure it with the last six screws for today. And congratulations, you've successfully attached the backplate. Before you go and celebrate, take some time to clean up all the leftover pieces, the original screws and of course the stock cooler. You never know if you need to resell your card in the future, so it's best to keep everything safe and sound. One additional note, I wasn't sure if the block came with plugs to direct the flow, so I purchased some overpriced embroidered ones. Suffice to say, they were a bit of a disappointment. I thought that the branding pieces would be magnetic, but unfortunately they're glued on after you attach the plugs. So if you're thinking about getting these, I wouldn't bother. However, if you want to go for a unified look as the included ones are silver, just go for some plain ones. Another weird tidbit is the RGB cable. I'm not sure if there's a technical limitation, but I wish EK would use the onboard RGB connector instead of this ugly thin cable that has to go all the way to the motherboard. Even though I'm running the case stealth, I didn't want to cut it either. For such a beautifully machined piece, it's a bit of a pity. All in all though, the entire process was pretty straightforward. I had imagined it to be a lot more challenging, but if you don't rush it and take it step by step, you should have no problem doing this at all. That being said, the rest of the entire custom loop is a bit of a different story, one I'll dive deeper into in the next video. And that's it, you've done it! Now bask in the glory and enjoy your days of retirement. If you have any questions regarding the cooler or the process, drop a line below and I'll try to answer it if I can. Thanks again for watching, see you in the next one, bye!